Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. We're going to talk a little bit about global variables in Node-RED. And this is a video that some of you may not have even known that you need. And if you're a programmer, if you know JavaScript, then this probably isn't the video for you. But if you're using Node-RED to kind of avoid programming, then there's a few concepts that you might need to understand. So we're going to talk about that. So first of all, when we talk about node red in general the way i always describe it is that things flow from left to right and basically th this error is going to keep popping up i've got an arduino on another place on the server but basically if i click here then this flows from left to right basically in in a line and unless you draw another thing down here then it's not going to connect to anything else and so let me show you let me show you the problem and then we'll figure out a way to solve it. So let's assume that you have two sensors coming in and you want to add the values of those two sensors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna, yeah, injecting a timestamp is fine on this. And we're gonna grab a function node. And if you don't write a lot of JavaScript, you may not use these very much, but they're super important in Node-RED because they allow you to do some cool things. So in JavaScript, you might say something like var a equals four, and then we can even just say uh, message.payload equals a, and basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna set a variable called a to four, and then we're just going to make that our message payload and return it. So if I drag a debug node over here, and I deploy, we'll get the COM16 error, and then uh, I will do it, and bam, we've got four. Great. So that's not a problem. We we understand how that works. Um, we're going to copy this now, and we're going to try to do something with this. And so if we were to come in here and say, let's try this, let's say var b equals 10, and then... Uh, let's say, okay, let's do this. Let's say var b equals 10 plus a. And then we're going to say message payload equals um, b. And we're going to return the message. So if we were to hit deploy, we get the COM16 error. And then um, I inject this and it tells me that a is not defined. Oh, okay. I mean, that makes sense because I never triggered this node. So I'm going to trigger this node. I'm going to get four and we just defined A, you just saw it. We defined A up here, and then I click this, and it tells me that A is not defined. And the reason for that is a term that programmers use, and uh, you kind of can use two terms. One is context, and the other one is scope. And so the idea is that basically anything that exists on this flow doesn't automatically exist on this flow. This, this thing has its own scope or its own context and this one has its own context and as far as it's concerned this one has no idea what's going on in this one and it doesn't care and so that's why I can't set a variable here and then use it here and if you're coming from a language like PHP or something that's a, a weird concept so what we're going to do we're going to learn real quickly about a thing called getters and setters and then we're going to use this in a landmine game to kind of make some logic happen. So what we're gonna do is instead of saying var a equals four, we're going to say global dot set, and then we're gonna put a set of parentheses, and you wouldn't expect this, but we're gonna put this in single quotes, and then we're gonna say four. So what we're saying is in the global context or in the global scope, set a variable called a and give it a name of four and then it really doesn't matter what we return so we'll just leave that there we don't really even have to return anything then we're going to come in here and we're going to say var a equals global dot get a and so now what we're saying is we're going to get the global variable that we set in another function and we're going to assign it to A. So now I can hit deploy. And when I trigger this, I just get the timestamp because it doesn't matter. We didn't return anything. But now I get 14, which is, that's the 10 
plus the four that we made over here. And so now all of a sudden your nodes that are coming in at different times and doing different things can interact with each other once you realize how to break out of this local scope. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna, I added a couple labels here for your help. I'm gonna delete this code and never fear, you'll have it in the description of this video. And we're gonna make a game. And before I make that game, I wanna explain a little bit of how it's gonna work. And I'm just gonna give you the code to it because I think it's a lot more important that you are able to follow along with how I built this rather than trying to sit there and type code while you're watching YouTube. So basically the way this is gonna work, it's gonna be a minesweeper type game. I used to have a thing in an escape room where there were nine landmines on the floor and the computer would randomly decide that you needed to step on one through five of those landmines and you had to pick which ones and then a random number between one and three of those were actually active mines and if you blew up then you got a 30 second penalty on your escape room time which i feel like is pretty generous for stepping on a landmine so anyway we're going to make a very simple version of that game and basically you will have to click there's four buttons you'll have to click two of them and uh try not to hit a mine so i'm going to drop in the code let me come over here to my code editor and i'm going to select and i'm going to go to import clipboard and paste into the current flow and so i'm going to drag this in here and again i'm going to give you this code so no worries so what's going to happen is the first thing we want to think through so let's You've got four buttons, one, two, three, and four, and one of these is secretly attached to a landmine. So the first thing we want to know is we want to know, has each of these buttons been pressed yet? And the second thing we want to know is, is this a landmine? Now there are two other things that we need to make the game work. We need to know, is the game over? And how many of these buttons have been pressed? And so we're going to use this starter code. We'll build to it a little bit more Basically, we're gonna use a timestamp. You can inject anything you want into this. And what this function is doing is it is going in here and setting, and I broke these way out. I could have used variables, and, or I could have used arrays and objects and all that kind of stuff, but I want it to be very straightforward. So, is one pressed? No. Is two pressed? No. Is three pressed? No. And then these are the actual buttons. Is it a landmine? And by default, the first four of them, all four of them, are not landmines. When you reset the game, none of them are landmines. Also, when you reset the game, the game is not over and you've pressed zero buttons. Now, this line of code, for those of you who have not done JavaScript when it comes to this kind of stuff, it's very weird, but essentially what's going on here is we are choosing a random number from zero through four, and then we're gonna round down because it's gonna give us a weird decimal. So it'll come up with 3.14 or whatever. We wanna round that down to three. So this math floor is going to round it down. Now by default, this is going to give us a random number of zero through three. And so we're just going to add one to it, which will give us zero, uh, one to four. So we've now set a random number of one to four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come back up here. And this line looks a little bit weird, but if I were to just put mine, if I were to just put this variable in here, then it would look at it as a number and not a string. And so it would throw all kinds of errors. So what I'm basically doing, I'm cheating a little bit. I put double quotes and then I'm joining that together. So I'm basically telling it that this is a string. And the reason for that is because these are strings, they're in quotes. So um, basically we're gonna set all the mines as not being mines. And then we're going to come back and randomly set one as the mystery mine and for demonstration purposes, we're gonna go ahead and print that out on the serial monitor. So, all right, when we deploy and I hit this, you'll see that number one is the mine. And if I do it again, number one is the mine. If I do it again, three, four. So we're getting random numbers are the mines every time we reset the game. So now it's gonna get a little bit more complicated, but what we're gonna do is the first thing we wanna check is we want to see is the game over because if the game's over there's really no point in continuing so if the game is over the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to say the game is over please reset and we're going to return now 
if you're not a coder, what you probably don't realize is that by doing this return, we're basically telling it to ignore everything that's below this point. So the first thing you care about when somebody goes to push a button is, is the game over? And so the next thing you wanna know is, well, what button did they press? And so we're gonna grab that from the message payload. So what we have here is, and this is another one of those things where we're joining things together. We want to know, has this button been pressed? And so we're doing the same thing with the double quotes, except we're putting it in the beginning. So we have, the, let's say this is a one. What this is gonna do is this is gonna go and check the global thing and say, has one been pressed? And so we're checking to make sure that we're not pressing the same buttons over and over again. So if it has not been pressed, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find out, well, how many buttons have been pressed so far? And we're gonna add one to it. So if no buttons had been pressed, then we're gonna make this a one. If two buttons had been pressed, then we would make it a three, although we can't get there. So that's what we're doing here. We're updating the number of buttons that have been pressed. So now what we wanna know is, is this a landmine? So we're gonna say is we're gonna check this to see if it's a landmine and if it's a mine we're going to say mine like this and we're gonna send the, the games over and we're gonna print that to a screen if it is now if it's not a mine then what we want to know is do they have another button to press and so if they haven't hit their limit of which this is actually two and it looks like one, but it, we're basically saying if it's less than two, then you're fine, but you must press another button. Otherwise you win because you've pressed the right number of buttons. So I think you're following. I, you guys seem pretty smart. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna reset the game and we're gonna say three. So let's just go ahead and hit the mine. So mine, you know, and now every time we try to do it, the game is over. We can't do anything at this point because we've already hit the mine. So we reset and now it's four. So if we press one, you're fine, but you must press another button. And then two, we win because we made it through two button presses without hitting the mine. And just for clarity, if we do one more time, we hit one, you can make one and then hit the mine on the second one. And so basically we've, we've used these global setters and getters to understand what had happened, even though it's outside of the context of this function, we're storing it all up in here. And just, just for a little bit of fun, in my last video, I used this node red uh, contrib say, you could do something like this. Instead, you could, uh, let's, let's do this. Let's add a switch statement. And what we want to do is start looking at what some of the options are. So if I come in here, we have uh, over and then we have mine and then we have another and we have win. So those are, those are four strings that could be coming out here. So what we could say is if it contains over, send it to the top one. And I'm not going to remember all these, I'm sure. If it, uh, and then we want to st not check all the rules, we want to stop after the first match. So if it contains another, if it contains mine, or if it contains win. So those are, I'm just kind of extrapolating this from the strings. And so I can come here and, so the first one is over another mine win. All right, so I could come here and say, I think I'm gonna have to change, oh, no, I can do this. Uh, the game is over, please hit reset. And then I can say, eh, you win. Another mine and win. Okay, so we're gonna copy this. Okay, but please press another button. Then we'll make this one boom, and we will make this one you win. 
Okay, so now we can drag these in here. And now the game should be over, so. Okay, so it took me a second. The one thing I didn't factor in was the capitalization. So uh, this one should be over and this one should be mine with a capital M. And again, this is silly that we're even sitting here doing this, but we're gonna do it because we can. The game is over. Please hit reset. So we hit reset, and then now the mine is three. Boom. So now boom, we lost. If I try to do it again. The game is over. Please hit reset. So I'll reset. The number one is the mine. You are good, but please press another button. And then you win. So there we go. We have made a text to speech landmine game using global setters and getters. And hopefully you learned a little bit. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. And thanks for watching.